Welcome back to the channel and to this build of the steady rest for my 13 inch South Bend lathe. We've made quite a bit of progress so far. So far we've finished the machining on the adjustment screws uh, that go into those brass jaws as well as the adjustment knobs themselves which was you know quite the undertaking for me I'm not afraid to say. I've also done a little bit of work in cleaning up those adjustment sleeves as well as some other parts of the steady rest. Well and the next job is to make this. This is the bed clamp for the steady rest. Now this piece goes between the bed rails from underneath and a bolt is placed up through it and then into the steady rest so it can be secured to the bedways. I designed this in CAD and I printed this prototype out in 3D so that I could make sure that it would fit you know, between the bed rails properly as well as it was aesthetically pleasing. I have this block of steel, mystery metal. I don't know exactly the alloy that I'm going to use it to make this part. I need to rough this down to the overall dimensions. I, I have to take quite a bit off of the longer dimension. And because I have it and it's fun to watch, I'm going to use the shaper to square this piece up. Well, first things first, I do want to make sure that the vise is clean of all chips. I don't want there to be any debris in here that would affect how well this ends up coming out. Well, before I put the block of steel in the vise, I'm going to just put one parallel in. This is a technique that I've seen on um, squaring up a, a piece of material. Well, I was going to start with this side, but the side that would have been in the movable jaw was bandsaw cut, and it is not even remotely square. So I think my best option is to lower the shaper table here, and let's get this rough sawn edge uh, cleaned up and squarish so that we can use it as our reference. I'm going to start off here with probably a 20 thousandths depth of cut. My only interest here is to get this surface clean and flat. Uh, I'll worry about the overall dimension when I end up machining the opposite side. For these roughing passes, I like to set a pretty healthy step over. So my step over here is about 12 thousandths of an inch. Yeah, this face was cut actually much worse than I originally thought. This is probably going to need about 120 thousandths um, overall in order to get the face cleaned up and flat. Well, that face looks really nice and clean. We'll go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees and start cleaning up the next face. Well, that definitely took a while, but quite frankly, it's fun. I, I love using the shaper. So now my piece is down to the overall dimensions of the part. So now I just need to take it over to the bridge port and start milling away the parts that I don't want to keep. Trying to come up with the best order of operations here for all of these features. I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to round over the corners. Um, this is an aesthetic feature for me, um, but I won't likely have another chance to do that if I don't do it now. I'm going to do this to all four of the short edges 
somebody just used this one two three block to align the edge of the piece to the edge of the vice jaw and that way I don't have to move the table I can just mill each edge and then rotate it to mill the other three So I have these rounding over bits that look an awful lot like the ones I used to use in a router when I was doing more woodworking. But these are obviously made for metal machines. I found these in a lot in an auction. So I'm hoping that these are still sharp enough to uh, give me a reasonably decent finish. Uh, regardless, even if it doesn't, I can always clean it up with a file. Um, some sandpaper and a scotch bright wheel. Ultimately, most of this edge is going to get machined away, and I'm only going to have maybe a half of an inch of this round over left. After each pass, I just raise the table about 25 thousandths of an inch, and I'll keep raising it until I get the profile that I'm looking for. With that edge where I would like to see it, I can now move on to the other three. I want to mill a couple of features in the top face of this part. They are about 350 thousandths from two opposite edges and about 200 thousandths or so deep and what these will do is will line up on the underside of the bed and help align the clamp to be uh, in the center of the bedways. Now although none of the dimensions on this part are really all that critical if I'm plus or minus 15 thousandths and in some cases if I'm plus or minus 250 thousandths it's going to be fine um, I'm trying to get close just so that I can be better at machining for when I need to be close I have the part flipped over now because I have to mill a slot down this face that will be about an inch wide through the entire length and about 680 thousandths deep. I'm using a, another auction find. It's just a two flute high speed steel end mill. Um, it's definitely a regrind. It looks to be, feels to be fairly sharp. So I just need to bring the table up gradually and keep cutting this slot. Uh, this is going to take a few passes. I'll bring you back when we're a little closer to done. Well, I've had to make a couple of adjustments on the fly here with this slot. I had a bit of a mishap where the end mill actually grabbed and, and pulled the part up out of the vise and actually dug in a lot deeper than what I intended to go. So now I've got to clean up the mess that Mr. Bozo uh, has given me. So I've completely blown that 680 thousandths deep dimension uh, for this slot, probably by a good uh, 100 thousandths, but that's okay. Um, again, it, it won't matter in the long run 
But what it does mean is I'm going to need to clean up the bottom of this um, with a few more passes. So rather than uh, bore you with this repetitive back and forth, I will jump up to the next feature that needs to get moved. Well, with the slot finally cleaned up to where it's at least reasonable, uh, I need to thin down each of these two pieces. I'm not sure what I'm calling them here, but they won't be as thick as you see them here. So I'm using the same end mill, and I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to try maybe plunging down and seeing if I can plunge down to depth and then just kind of gradually uh, uh, move down plunging, sort of chipping away at this face and then come back and clean it up. Well, that obviously didn't go as planned. Um, I thought I had this part in there pretty tight, so this is not likely the right way that I want to be doing this. So uh, on to plan B. Well, plan B is not to change the technique, but to change the end mill. Here I have a 5 8 inch, four flute, high speed steel end mill. It's a Niagara and it's brand new. Again, uh, another auction find. So I'm gonna try again, plunging down the face and then coming back and doing a cleanup pass. I also need to take off some material on the ends of these two pieces um, and even though the plunge technique seemed to be okay I don't think I'm going to use it again uh, here I'm just going to set the edge of the end mill using the paper technique again and then um, mill off uh, the ends here uh, about 25 thousandths at a time Now I left a, about 125 thousandths of material to come off on each of the sides. So I have in the mill now a indexable um, rounding over end mill. My son gave this to me as a gift. It has two carbide inserts that are a quarter of an inch in diameter. And so this will give me that nice 1 8 inch radius um, on all four sides. Well, it worked pretty good for the other milling operations, so I'm back to using this 5 8 inch center cutting four flute high speed steel end mill. I'm going to plunge cut uh, this hole down the middle and then I will elongate it so it's about one inch from center to center and a little more than 5 8 of an inch wide. I'll probably expand the uh, sides by about ten thousandths each. Move the table over half of an inch and plunge down again. After plunge cutting uh, both sides, now I am running the end mill down the length from end to end to clean up anything that was left over.
Well, to give the edges of the slot a slightly better look, better feel, I put a chamfering tool in the mill um, since it was still lined up on the DRO and uh, ran it from end to end to give it that nice little chamfer. I turned the piece over and used the chamfering uh, tool on the side as well. The top side actually came out a little bit nicer than the bottom. I, I ran this one in considerably deeper as well. Well, we're just about done with this part. We have one more major um, machining operation to do, and that's going to require the use of the rotary table. This will be my first time using the rotary table, my first time using this coaxial indicator. I need to find the center of the table and so that it's aligned over the center of the spindle. This tool is kind of neat. It uh, when the needle is moving the least, that's when you know that the spindle is right over the center of whatever round object you're trying to indicate on. And I'd say that's dead nuts. So we'll set the X and Y zero on the DRO and get set up for the next stop. Well, I have our part lightly bolted to this angle plate. I did have to enlarge the center slot on this uh, angle plate to accommodate the 5 8 inch bolt that I have going through it. And um, now I need to secure the angle plate to the rotary table. Well, knowing I was going to be using the rotary table for this project, the other day I made these T-nuts and these toe clamps. I also took a trip up to the hardware store this morning to pick up some 5 16 um, bolts to use as jack studs, as well as a handful of nuts and washers. And while I was at the hardware store, I picked up a piece of uh, all thread that I'm just cutting into lengths to use for these hold down clamps. The T slots on this rotary table are so narrow that I think 5 16 is the largest hardware that I'm going to be able to use. But I'm still going to take advantage of the toe clamps in your typical milling machine hold down kit. Um, I'm really concerned about the rigidity of this setup and just how secure it is. Hopefully this will be enough to hold all of this down so that this part doesn't go flying across the shop. Well, it just so happens that I'm going to be cutting this radius at 4 inches. And this being an 8 inch rotary table, I'm going to take advantage of that and do what I can to align the front of the part with the very edge of the rotary table. I'm just using this parallel to line this up by eye. Again, this is not critical, but I want to get it close enough so that it is aesthetically pleasing. Well, believe it or not, I had to do all of that setup again. I realized after getting everything lined up that I wasn't going to have enough uh, table travel, left and right table travel, on the mill to get it over the part in order to cut that radius. So I removed everything, loosened the rotary table and slid it down closer to the vise and now I have everything recentered and set back up.
Well, everything seems to be clamped down and in position. I have the DRO set so that as I move the table, I'll be getting closer to that my four inch mark, uh, plus you know half of the diameter of the cutter. So I'm just going to move the table in about 25 to 50 thousandths at a pass, and then um, rotate the table to start uh, cutting this radius. Well, now that that radius is cut, I've switched back over to my rounding over bit. Uh, just again, this is aesthetic only. I want to give it a nice uh, rounded look. So I will move this in slowly until I get the profile that I'm looking for. Well, that looks good. I will flip this over and do the other side and then we'll bring it back when I'm done. Well, after a few minutes on the scotch Bright wheel, this part is done. It's pretty close to the 3D printed prototype, except for that one dimension. I really like how these radiuses turned out. The radius on those ridges isn't just aesthetic. As you can see here, it's necessary in order for it to actually fit on the end of the bedway. So you don't have to take this clamp off every time you want to slide the steady rest on to the end. The finishes on this aren't perfect and I did screw up a couple of times but I'm learning and I'm getting better each time I push myself to try to make something a little different. I didn't mill these reliefs here that were in the 3D printed prototype. They were also in the clamp that's under the tailstock. I didn't have a ball and end mill large enough that would have accommodated that but I don't think it's really necessary. Well, these are the parts that I have made so far. It's not complete. I still have a little bit more to go before I can start assembly. So hopefully in the next video, we'll be able to make the final pieces and start putting this together. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon so you'll know when that video gets released. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel analytics. And if you feel so inclined, take a look in the description. There's other ways that you can support the channel, and it is much appreciated. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.